Good evening. Welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Stephen Merchant. In the news this week, desperate to start another fight with the Daily Mail, Ed Miliband is persuaded not to by his spin doctors. <laughs> At a press conference in London, Cheryl Cole offers to show off her new arse tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> and in Westminster, the day before throwing an egg at a politician, a very methodical protester rehearses her plan. <laughs> <laughs> On Ian's team tonight is the presenter of BBC One Saturday night series, I Love My Country, described by the Daily Mail as a show for everyone except Ralph Miliband. <laughs> Please welcome Gabby Logan. <laughs> and with Paul tonight is an actor and comedian whose mother is one of the best makeup artists in the country. So I dread to think what he really looks like. Please welcome <laughs> Hal Cruttenden. <laughs> And we start with the bigger stories of the week, Paul and Howe. Take a look at this. Yes, this is Chinese opera, and that's, that's George Osborne <laughs> in China, looking very pleased that he's there at the opera. There's... Uh... <laughs> Mr Toad. Yes, <laughs> there is. <laughs> this is uh, Boris and George in China. That's right, they were there on a charm offensive. Mm. Yes. Um, Boris provided the charm. Yes. <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> but did you see that George had all the girls? Well, he's a good-looking, smooth operator, he isn't is. he? He is. <laughs> It's that haircut, isn't it? 10% yeah. <laughs> off wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> now, it was supposed to be Boris's trip. Mm. Um, why, did, why did George get along? How did he manage just to weasel in? Why did he weasel in? Did he weasel oh. in? <laughs> I don't know. I've been in America. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that in a fancy way, like, you know, I've been in America. I just mean... I mean, I was. Yeah, I was fancy, actually. It was Los Angeles. Screw you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, it was. Why, why was, why was George, uh, why was George along? It was meant to be Boris's trip to start with. Right. And then I think that the suggestion was that Boris might need a chaperone. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> there is some suggestion as well, perhaps, that, that uh, George was also trying to make up for, for previous incidents that had occurred... Last we... year, yes. they met the Dalai Lama. Right. And that upset the Chinese. George and Boris? No, no. David Cameron. Cameron and, Os and Clegg. Cameron yes. and Clegg. Yes, he took Clegg with him. Cleggy so that... and Camo. They yeah. met. They met. <laughs> they met Lamo. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Chinese are terrified of the Dalai Lama because he's a threat to their national security. You can tell from this picture how terrifying he is. Look at him. No. <laughs> I mean, striking fear into the heart. How did Boris upstage George? I don't know. Tell us. Thank you. <laughs> um, it was a big speech at Peking University. Any mm. ideas? Does that? Did he speak Pekingese? Which is Pekingese? <laughs> Isn't that dog? Did he speak dog? <laughs> I was, I was no, trying he to spoke find... orange or man. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're on the right lines. Yeah, George was trying to make the point that China was so important to the British people that his daughter was learning Mandarin at school. And then Boris said, "I can tell you that my own daughter is not only learning Mandarin; she's coming out here next week. How about that, George?" <laughs> That George <laughs> swivel. <laughs> Here's a picture, by the way, of uh, of George and Boris looking pally. Uh -huh. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Come here, me old pal. Nothing, <laughs> nothing ever does about his appearance is accidental. Yeah. <laughs> the tie <laughs> is placed there <laughs> very, <laughs> very deliberately. Phallic tie. Why is Do that woman looking so disgusted? Uh, She's looking at Boris Johnson. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they both went there on on a. A sales pitch, and I think because people have said that both of them might take over the, the government one day, which is an extraordinary thought, isn't it? <laughs> that they were both trying to show I can sell more stuff to China than you can, and they both made these speeches. Did, did you see Boris's speech? He said the reason that China would love us because Harry Potter's first girlfriend was Chinese. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, how did The Independent describe George Osborne and, and Boris Johnson? Well, they described them as yin and yang. Did they really? Yeah, no, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Someone described them as yin and yang. Uh, These well, elemental forces that... Shake the world. <laughs> <laughs> and the... disappear up each other yeah. in that symbol. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's horrific. That's... <laughs> I'm just trying to have a bit is, of upmarket well, in, Chinese philosophy. In actuality, they're more Ant and Deck. <laughs> yes, they are. So. But now I've got Ant and Deck going up each other. It's... 
And what was George offering the Chinese, according to the Independent? You mentioned trade, but what else? Oh, anything. What is it? They're going to uh, take over Manchester, when nuclear can, power? It's going to be a lot easier to get in. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, Absolutely, yes. Yeah, according to the on, uh, Independent, George was offering no limit to the number of Chinese who can study in Britain, no limit to the number of Chinese tourists who can visit, and no limit to the amount of business we can do together, which chimes in perfect harmony with the Home Secretary, who wants fewer Chinese investors, <laughs> fewer students, <laughs> and fewer tourists to meet the target for net immigration. <laughs> Staying in the Mystic East, what's the big news from the Himalayas? It's the Yeti. Go on. Uh, they think the Yeti... Well, they know the Yeti doesn't exist because we would have found one by now, but they think it might be a bear. Right. That's what they're saying, isn't it? A bear covered in snow. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, absolutely right, yeah. And do we know who, um, who covets or has coveted a Yeti? Tom Cruise? <laughs> Could be the cruise machine. Do you know him? Has he, have you met him? Do I know Cruise? Maybe yeah. I went to dinner while I was in LA at Cruise's house. Oh. Oh. <laughs> How was it? Did Great. You... Lovely bit of chicken. <laughs> he mu did he wear lifts in his shoes to meet you? He must I'm have not done. answering those kind of questions. I, bet you did. <laughs> <laughs> I played pool with his pool cue from The Colour of Money. Oh, really? Yeah. Played with Tom Cruise's pool cue. That sounds weird. No, I'll just go. <laughs> oh, there you are. Um, now, do we know who else coveted the Yeti? Alexander the Great. He wanted one. Oh, yeah, he wanted one. Don't judge, different times. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Porsche Cayenne now, isn't it? People kind of... things that people... He's giving you that look as though he's got yeah. one. Yeah. I haven't oh, got sorry. a Porsche Cayenne. No. You, you wouldn't fit in a Porsche, would you? All right, come on. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good thing. You have a, I bet you've got a Range Rover. I'm only you? mentioning that because I did a show recently and I mentioned Yorkshire Tea and a huge box arrived. Uh, oh! Just after <laughs> really? <show. laughs> Oh, Gabby, I'll tell you one thing, though. Aren't Rolex watches amazing? <laughs> I really like Filipino women. <laughs> <laughs> this is the latest attempt to sell Britain to China. At a press conference in Beijing, when Boris Johnson was asked about threats of violence against dissenting journalists and a shameful record on women and abortions, Boris said, can we just talk about China instead? <laughs> Boris was keen to point out that the first girl that Harry Potter ever kissed was a Chinese student called Cho Chang. If you're wondering, Harry kissed her in the Goblet of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> they had to cut that scene out from the film to get a PG rating. Yeah. <laughs> you and Gabby, take a look at this. Uh, it's the policeman mm -hmm. saluting Andrew Mitchell, who mm. was the Kissing. victim of a, a plot. He's saying goodbye to his career as they stitch him up. This is Plebgate. Yes. Um, and it, we're finally coming to the end of it. Maybe but not. It seems... Yes. ..that there should be somebody hung out for this. Yeah, well, there've been the some... That's the implication, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, the CPS are looking at prosecuting some policemen. So it's probably not the end, then. OK, it's not the... Oh, God, all right, it's not the end at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's been going on for a year already, hasn't it? Yes, he had to resign. He was Chief Whip for supposedly calling a policeman a pleb. Mm. But then it turned out that the version uh, the events which the police gave wasn't strictly true and the police log, a bit like Hillsborough and those other things, wasn't actually an, uh, a record of events, more a sort of fantasy of <laughs> what they would like to have happened. Um, <laughs> but finally, it's all coming out and um, a lot of policemen will end up um, either being arrested or um, being forced to apologise. Well, according to The Guardian, the phrase uh, that Mitchell consistently denied using was this. Uh, mm. although the mail said it was this. <laughs> well, how long did the original incident actually last, the actual incident? 45, 45 seconds. seconds. Yeah. 45 seconds. And so far it's cost... Quarter of a million pounds yes, it has. to yes. investigate. Could we get the Chinese pay for that? <laughs> 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 but if, if they must really not have liked him. There must have been a build-up of animosity towards him. Yeah, do you think he'd ri ridden up to the gates most days and said, Open it! Yeah. yeah. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> 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 Open, come yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> Bike here, eco. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a terrible dilemma. Do you believe a Tory member of the cabinet or a policeman? Mm. You know, public's got a real problem here. Yeah. <laughs> um, in other news, which major international figure fell foul of the law in a Westminster street this week? Oh, yeah. yes, uh, Hillary Clinton. It was a car, wasn't it? It was parked probably illegally or something. It was a picture in one of the papers, I think. Her car's surrounded by SAS men or whatever they call called, SS men, Secret Service, <laughs> CIA, Stop. CIA, all that lot. And they were standing around remonstrating with this uh, public servant who refused to tear up the ticket. Absolutely right. A spokesman for Westminster Council told The Telegraph, 
Mrs. Clinton can now download a new app for her iPhone, <laughs> which will tell her in real time where a parking space is available in Westminster, <laughs> the only place in London where this is possible. <laughs> Slight whiff of the PR department. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Finally, would anyone like to see Labour MP Diane Abbott neatly deflect a question from Andrew Neil this week? Yes. Yeah. Mm. So, why did Ed Miliband fire you? Good afternoon. <laughs> Textbook. In that picture, though, it looks like the vase behind was pulling a sad face. <laughs> <her designation. laughs> Uh, yeah, this is the return of Plebgate. Andrew Mitchell attempted to draw a line under the scandal a year ago. According to the Mail last October, Mr Mitchell met three members of the Police Federation. I think we all know how that meeting started. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, I'm here now in the park here. <laughs> Meanwhile, this week, a man has been fined £100 after hiding in a wardrobe during a police raid. He nearly got off on a technicality as the police hadn't finished counting to 20. <laughs> <laughs> and so to round two, and it's the picture spin quiz. Fingers on buzzers, please, teams. <laughs> well, man discovered inside loaf of bread. <laughs> <laughs> Putting bread in your ears makes you deaf. Um, <laughs> this isn't these hybrid things like cronuts and... I've been reading about cronuts. It's it's like a, a croissant mixed with a donut. Ah, Th this would be a maggot then, a man mixed with a baguette. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Very good. That's right. Good. A man must have gone into hospital and he had his he had a headache for 15 years. You know what it was? And they opened him up and they found a piece of bread inside his brain. It's one of those stories, oh. isn't it? Man with a piece of bread in his head. <laughs> well, it's it's approaching that if you is went it... back to the 17th century. Is it something sexual? <laughs> <laughs> Did they used to? put bread in people's heads in the 17th century when they had really bad migraines. Yeah, and if it grew into a loaf, you were a witch. <laughs> <laughs> You're inching closer, yes. This is the discovery of a remarkable medical textbook by 17th century royal physician, Dr William Sermon. Do we know how he cured earache? They put bread in your ear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how did Dr Sermon suggest people cure toothache? Rub the infected tooth against the backside of a fox in the moonlight <laughs> while whistling London Derry air backwards. <laughs> <laughs> that was if you couldn't get an erection. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Any other ideas for a toothache? You, 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 you spread something on it. The yes. Rancid, yes. rancid oh, something. Oh, OK, I'm interested. Poo or something. Oh, come on! <laughs> Lovely time with the <laughs> moonlit fox. <laughs> it was beautiful, and then it's you lowering it again. I it would be something like that. Is it aspirin? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was take aspirin and see a proper doctor. doctor. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was rub watercress into the gums. Fingers on buzzers, teams. Is it anything to do with the fact that uh, people who work for the American government have this week gone back to work? It's exactly that. Well done. Yes. America hasn't closed down. There was a possibility the whole country was just going to pack it in. <laughs> just what, give up completely and say, no, we can't do it. Now, I don't know what's been going on in America. <laughs> <laughs> is, that, is that why everybody was free to play pool? Because no one was working. Was he there? Was Barack there? No, well? he's on it the was... phone saying, no, Tom, I can't come. I gotta... <laughs> <laughs> Stephen Merchant, never heard yeah. of him. I bet he's there. <laughs> so, yeah, so what exactly was happening in America? that has now not happening anymore. Well, the Republicans weren't agreeing a deal on, on paying back the debt. Right. And it got nearer and nearer and nearer the deadline and they thought Obama would cave in and say, I'll forget my health care plan. But he didn't. He just said, no, we either fall over the cliff together and the world goes with us, or we come to an agreement. And they came to an agreement. So it's an absolutely extraordinary story about common sense breaking out, even amongst the Tea Party. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which is quite big news. How long is America now open for? Now that they've reopened. 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> January. It's called the fiscal cliff. cliff yeah. Right. Mm. Which is a wonderful term. Yes. When you go off the fiscal cliff, do you hit bankruptcy beach at the bottom <laughs> here? <laughs> <laughs> Financial tide moves <laughs> away. <laughs> who, who has let them extend their overdraft the whole time? Well, it's time. the Chinese and own most of the bonds. Right. I and mean, there's a debt of something like a zillion gillion. Uh, that's a technical term, you'll uh, <laughs> follow me. And the Chinese own most of it. But can all of us get an account with the Chinese? <laughs> <laughs> There's a firm if called Wonga. Extending. <laughs> Does anyone know how high the debt ceiling actually was before the deal kicked in? 
It's 16,000 billion, I think. That's right. 16.7 trillion. Ah, in, same in thing. The papers, <laughs> which yeah. uh, the papers helpfully explain that as being uh, 10.5 trillion pounds. That's so good, because that's normally they explain everything in football pitches, <laughs> don't they? <laughs> How many football pitches? Everything's, everything yeah. in size in this country is explained in football pitches. Have you noticed No that? wonder I've got no spatial awareness. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer sure. if it was basketball courts, personally. Yeah. I just... <laughs> <laughs> Did you shoot some hoops? Of course I shot some hoops. Six foot <laughs> seven, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I, I, I can't play basketball, but I genuinely love going to um, basketball games because because they're so tall, I feel like I'm among my people. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like my, do my youngest daughter is Ginger, and I have the same feeling when we go to Scotland. It's like her people. <laughs> <laughs> Where has this left the uh, Republican Party? In oh. disarray. Right. Yeah, so the Republicans are coming out a bit badly. Absolutely right. According to the Times, uh, the Republican Party's approval rating has dipped to an all-time low of 24%. So they, they shut down the government, they almost brought the world economy to its knees, but they're still more popular than the Lib Dems, who are on 9%. <laughs> Yeah, this is the news that the US has reopened for business. The US shutdown was described by one commentator as the greatest ever threat to homeland security. Bit of a slap in the face for Al-Qaeda, <laughs> didn't it? <laughs> Fingers on Buzzer's teams for the next one. <laughs> Have they shut the Humber Bridge to stop people going to, to Hull? stop people going to Hull? Yeah. <laughs> they don't want any more tourists. They've got enough. <laughs> Have they... Maybe they're trying a new slogan, Hull, one letter different from hell. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, you're in, you're in the it... right neighbour. Both of you in the right neighbourhood. John <laughs> Prescott's from Hull, or his MP for Hull. Yeah. That's why they just close Hull. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he's not an MP anymore, is he? I'm being a... yeah, no, he's of the House of Lords. Oh, right. He's a Lord in Hull as well. Mm -mm. Is he the Lord of Hull? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I am the Lord of Hull! <laughs> 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 it is to do with Hull, but it's actually The Economist magazine. They have a very specific view on Hull. Mm. It should be shut down. Is that what they think? Absolutely right, yes. The Economist magazine thinks that the city should be closed down along with Burnley, Middlesbrough and Hartlepool. <laughs> Closed down. Just closed down. <laughs> Why? The Economist described any efforts to save struggling northern communities as misguided. <laughs> <laughs> you lived in Leeds, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I was born in, Leeds. You're born in Leeds. Yeah. Should they close that down? Leeds is doing very well. It's thriving. Doing... Have you heard of Leeds, Ian? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's a football team in Leeds, isn't there? There is. <laughs> you see, local knowledge. <laughs> Paul, any view on Leeds? <laughs> So good they named it once. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, this is The Economist magazine's plan to shut Hull. Grim, dull and uninspiring, The Economist comes out every week. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Paul. Useless watch is marketed. <laughs> Is this a smart watch? In some ways. Ah, oh, this is about life expectancy. Yes. It measures your health. That's what it's got to be, isn't it? it no, hang on, wait, you've been here for years. I don't know the rules. They buzz, but you started answering. Uh, oh. Ian's a ventriloquist. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll watch him for the answer. <laughs> Time remaining 63 years, that's the clue, isn't it? It must be making your blood pressure or it sort of measures your, the, your breath or something. It's something about you. You have that on, it tells you you've got 63 years left. So you don't, you're not really worried about that point, but when it gets to like six minutes and 34 seconds, <laughs> then you start getting, looking for quality time. You're absolutely right. That's exactly really? what it is. Yeah. yeah. Don't people get hit by cars or something? Wouldn't they get a refund if it's <laughs> what looking at the watch? When you go, I, I was. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> you know the amazing thing about this? This is not a joke. This is serious. Uh, my associate Carl Pilkington genuinely came up with this idea about three or four years ago. Really? And he's a moron. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the watch does work, as you say, by calculating uh, your death date, by taking into account the various stress factors that could hasten your death, like smoking, uh, drinking, and wearing a watch that constantly reminds you you're about to die. <laughs> <laughs> and you probably lie to your own watch. Yeah. yeah. The watch says how many units, you go, hardly any. <laughs> yeah. Two, three, maybe, you know, glass with Downton. <laughs> <laughs> I'd adjust that number with a little switch on the side, put it up to another 20. Yeah. <laughs> 83 years. <laughs> That'd be the thing to do. You imagine Bruce Forsyth's watch. <laughs> Technically, it's a sundial. <laughs> <laughs> I, do, I do hope that Rolex makes this watch. 
And if they don't, I love them anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Filipino women can shorten your life, don't you? <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. This is the new motto for the Fukushima nuclear power plant, which had a meltdown last year. And unbelievable, I don't know if I can actually say this live, mm. but this character, because it's Fukushima, is known as Fuck Uppy. <laughs> Amazingly, you're almost exactly right. <laughs> it's the mascot of Fukushima Industries, which makes commercial freezers. Uh, is anyone interested in seeing the mascot of the Fukushima nuclear power plant? They do have a mascot. Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Can you show the original one again? It looks like Ross Kemp. <laughs> when he... Do you remember? I mean, it, it does. Talking of uh, Japanese mascots, who do you think this is? Oh, is that an aubergine on his head? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is. I couldn't confirm or deny if that's oh, an aubergine. Yeah. That's an they helper. are going to host... Did they not get the Olympics, didn't they, in 2020? You may be right, you know all about sports. <laughs> no, I don't think they... As we say in California. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded a lot more like death. <laughs> 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 He's actually a mascot for uh, a Japanese prison. <laughs> <laughs> this is Fuck Uppy, the mascot for a Japanese oh, refrigeration company. It really is a schoolboy error for a company to leave the name of its fridges open to such puerile jokes, said the managing director of Smeg. <laughs> <laughs> Time now for the odd one out round, just one between you this week. Cambridge. The Pharaoh Ramesses II, <laughs> Princess Michael of Kent, and the Environment Minister Owen Paterson. Oh, I've no, no idea. Any thoughts on this? Um, I haven't a clue. I, it's, it's, it's not anything to do with m mummification, <laughs> but no, it can't be. Well, to expand, I'm interested to know what you're thinking, maybe. <laughs> Princess Michael's still alive, isn't she? Yes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and anything but else has been mummified, including yeah. Cambridge. <laughs> yes. <laughs> anything to do with counties? Uh, Owen Paterson is trying to kill badgers in Gloucestershire. Princess Michael of Kent. Right. Cambridge. Yes. Shire. Yes. <laughs> Gabby, you were on to something earlier when you mentioned badgers. Owen Paterson looks like a badger. With that <laughs> <eye>. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Princess Michael of Kent is a uh, man in the badger watch line. <laughs> <laughs> There's a whole bunch of uh, badgers yeah. that are causing trouble. Mm. But right. not in Egypt. But, but, but... <laughs> no, that was a locus of... That was a plague but there's of locusts. Been, right, there's a plague... OK, a plague of locusts, oh, plague of... Oh, plague of oh, plague, 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 plague. So, plague. Well, all right, so, come on. Oh, so she's got a plague of something in the, the oh, thingy. He's has. got a plague of badgers. Yeah. She had a Cambridge plague. has got a plague of undergraduates. <laughs> um, <laughs> everybody has a plague. No, everybody. Cambridge Apart hasn't. from Addison, oh. who's... who is a plague. Oh, well a plague. done, oh, well done. Yes, yes. yes. Ah. Congratulations. It's actually they've been plagued by frogs. Oh, Except gosh. Environment Minister Owen Patterson, who was played by badgers. <laughs> uh, what does Princess Michael claim to have done only once since she got married? <laughs> She's had two children, hasn't she? Right. Twins. Went <laughs> 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 to the high street once. Well done, the absolutely right, yes. She said, I've only walked down a high street once in my married life. <laughs> Obviously, uh, Remesis II, do we know what he suffered from a plague of? Is it rats? Would it be rats? I've given it away. It was actually frogs. I, I said yeah. that. And what about Cambridge? No, you may have actually missed this story. This was um, in the Cambridge News. Uh, there was a man on his boat in Cambridge, uh, Alistair Curry Crawford, who suddenly noticed there were a lot of frogs all over the place. Here he is. <laughs> wow. He said, there were so many frogs, you couldn't walk around without it being <laughs> genocide. <laughs> I can only think they came from the sky <laughs> because they suddenly appeared from nowhere. <laughs> it, it happened, this incident, on the 23rd of July, earlier in the year, um, according to the, the Cambridge News, just 24 hours after the <laughs> Duchess of Cambridge gave birth to the new prince. Boaters on the cam thought they were getting an army of frogs to accompany the new prince. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they've uh, all been plagued by frogs, apart from Owen Patterson. In an article in the Sunday Times, Princess Michael of Kent talks about being told she had to downsize, adding, it was the worst word I'd heard <laughs> in ages. <laughs> That's only because when she goes out, she thinks people are calling her, that posh Kent. <laughs> <laughs>
Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features as its guest publication, Bonsai Focus. <laughs> dedicated to the art of cultivating tiny Japanese trees. Bonsai Focus, by the way, has a mascot called Grow the Fuck Uppy. <laughs> <laughs> and we start with Print Your Own What? Tiny plans for a tree house. <laughs> <laughs> body part. It's a, it's a body part. It's definitely oh. a body part. Kidney. Gallbladder. It's bladder. Well done. Is Absolutely it? right. Yeah, print your own bladder. Well done. <laughs> yeah, no, it took two decades for scientists to, to develop a 3D printer that could create body parts. And it's going to take the first customer two minutes before he starts printing a pair of boobs. <laughs> <laughs> Next, BBC pays five million to what? Stop me going to BT Sport. Oh. <laughs> That's obviously a complete lie. Right. <laughs> it sounded like a pitch to me. <laughs> is it to lure Noel Edmonds back? Where's he gone? He's at Channel, Channel 4. Where's he gone? He he's on No Deal. So is he there? That's it, he can't yeah. leave. Yeah, he lives in the little box. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> he has a whale of a time, and he doesn't know. Sometimes he's like in number nine, sometimes he's in number 15. Yeah. <laughs> Bring him back the clangers, so it could be that. <laughs> Bring back the clangers. Oh! oh. oh. <laughs> and finally, success means Mr. Kobayashi is on top of Mrs. Kobayashi. <laughs> <laughs> on top of the world, looking down at a very small creation. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's actually. A path of conflict with the bonsai world. Oh, there you are. <laughs> so, the final <laughs> scores are Paul and Hal have an epic five, Ian and Gabby triumphant with 11. Ah. Yeah, that's a <laughs> On which note, we say thank you to our panellists Ian Hislop and Gabby Logan, Paul Merton and Hal Cruttenden. And I leave you with news that at a film premiere in London, Tom Hanks finally meets the man who inspired the character of Forrest Gump. As the Miss China contest ends in a draw, the judge announces it'll all come down to the tiebreak round. <laughs> <laughs> and there's more shock reactions to Cheryl Cole's arse tattoo as she spotted sunbathing naked in her garden. <laughs> Good night. Getting up close and a little too personal with the Member of Parliament for Spark Hill next, Citizen Khan is on a mission, whilst after the news, superstars on the sofa from the one and only Macca to Oscar winner Natalie Portman with Graham Norton here at 10.35.